Beer and Jews, we're here at Rangitata Island Aerodrome today, first of the, uh, the open days here. Saw you practicing in your chipmunk earlier on. Tell me a little bit of the uh, history of this particular machine. So this aircraft was built in 1952 in the UK and was operated at White Waltham Airfield, which is the closest airfield to Windsor Castle, which is where Prince Philip learned to fly in this aeroplane. This is the first aircraft he flew and he did approximately 20 hours in this aircraft and about 15 in one other chipmunk which is now sitting in the Royal Air Force Museum in Crossford. Right, so two aircraft flown by Prince Philip, one on the other side of the world, one here in New Zealand still flying. Did he actually solo in this machine? Uh, no, he soloed in the other aircraft which is a bit unfortunate but he did his um, initial flight test in this aeroplane and this was the first one he flew. Excellent, excellent. So how long have you had the aircraft? Uh, I bought a half share in the aircraft just over two years ago and purchased it outright last year. So what are your plans for it? Are, are you going to hold on to it long term or is it a stepping stone to something else? Uh, I'll hold on to it for a wee while hopefully. I want to get it painted back into the original colour scheme eventually when <laughs> When money allows, but uh, as with anything, it'll be a long, slow process. I'll hold on to it and hopefully get another couple of aeroplanes, but definitely keep on holding on to this one. Right, so as it's painted at the moment, N861WP with the Queen's Flight monogram on the front, that's not original then? Um, no, it's not. This is uh, halfway between two different colour schemes. It's halfway between the RAF colour scheme and the University of London Air Squadron scheme. So the um, university schemes also had the orange stripes down the side of the aircraft, but the, um, the RAF colour scheme never had this black stripe down the side here, so it's kind of halfway between the two. Uh, earlier this afternoon you also flew the, uh, the Tiger Moth, a bit of an aerobatic routine in there. What's, what are the two aircraft like? You know, is there much of a difference between the two? Obviously one's open cockpit and one's closed, but they're both de Havilland machines. So the Tiger, being an earlier design, does have slightly heavier controls. It's still a very graceful aeroplane to fly, but you definitely have to be a bit more skilled to hear about the Tiger than you do a Chipmunk. The Chipmunk, known as either the poor man's Spitfire or the Spitmunk, um, is very nice and easy to hear about. Very nice harmonised controls and just really a pleasure to fly. Both... Oh, it's hard to choose which is the nicest one. Um, talking about the Spitmunk reminds me that I've never looked closely at the aircraft enough before. I see Rolls-Royce monograms on the engine cowl. What's that about? Well, I th think some of the engines were built by Rolls-Royce. So we claim we're flying behind the Rolls-Royce, but sadly not quite as many horsepower and not as many cylinders as... <laughs> as a Spitfire. <laughs> and what, what is the actual engine in this aircraft? So this one, the engine that's in it currently is a Bristol Sidley Gypsy Major 10 Mark II which is 145 horsepower. Now Bevan you're actually based here at Rangitata Island at the moment, um, you'll obviously be pleased with the way the day's gone today? Oh uh, yes, it, it, the day has gone very very well. We're, we're hoping for a good day but with the way, weather the way it's been, it's the best day in weeks and I've just had such a spectacular turnout with everyone rocking up and the military reenactors have really, really added to the day, They're digging their trenches and it's just been fantastic. Great, Bjorn, thanks very much. Oh, you're welcome, thanks.